This video is an update based on the experience I've gained since part 1 was published. It also includes an overview of the Y-Copter Quadcopter which I designed shortly after part 1 was published. The Y-Copter Quad has flown exceptionally well in the last 12 months. It's very stable, fast and it produces smooth and vibration free video at all power levels. If you haven't seen part 1, I recommend that you take a look, as it gives a basic understanding of multi-rotor design and construction. There's very little I would change in the part 1 video, but I've learnt more about voltage, motor and propeller configurations, and a few other tips that I'll share in this video. First an overview of the Y-Copter Quad. Its size is around 500mm square or 680mm diagonal from motor shaft to motor shaft. The motors are 3530 NTM 1100 kV. The ESCs are Hobby King F30A, flashed with Simon K uh, firmware. The props are Groutner 10x5 electro props and the battery is a 5000mAh 4S at 25C or above. The quadcopter is constructed from 1.6mm fibreglass sheet and wood sections. These are bolted together to give a torsionally rigid frame. The inner frame is very tough. The motor arms and vibration mounts are designed to break away in the event of a crash. The motor arms are clamped in place and can therefore be easily replaced. The design separates the transmitters and the receivers. At the front of the multi-rotor you've got the video transmitter and you've got the camera which can be fairly, uh, fairly noisy and at the rear you've got the radio control receiver and antenna and the GPS receiver for the OSD. The design separates uh, the two areas by at least 400 millimeters which uh, greatly improves range of RC control. Vibration reduction is built in both for the control board and the camera to ensure that you get vibration free video. The main flight battery is very easy to access and fit and it can be moved forwards or backwards to adjust for changes in centre of gravity. The weight is distributed along the pitch plane. This makes roll agile and means the quad has a fairly level flight profile even when it's travelling quite fast. The camera is positioned at the front which gives it a prop free view even with wide angle lenses. As in part 1 we'll look at airframe, power system, control and vibration reduction. So first of all airframe. In part 1 I said that you needed a reasonably large machine for smooth and stable video. With fast ESCs and higher propeller speeds physical size can be reduced quite a bit without compromising stability. In part 1 I said that multi-rotors fly best on low KV motors. By using smaller and lower lift propellers that rotate faster, you can design a smaller machine that is both stable and agile. The higher propeller speed makes control board corrections and commanded inputs much more precise. On descents, instability is reduced considerably. The props are still rotating fast even in low lift descent situations. But there is a downside. Smaller and faster props are less efficient than larger and slower props. Don't expect longer flight times just by increasing battery voltage. Also in part 1 I said that higher battery voltage is more efficient. Well it is in theory, but using the higher voltage often means reducing propeller size. 
as smaller diameter props are less efficient, then the efficiency gains from lower current are often cancelled out. The advantage of higher voltage is higher prop speed and the use of higher power without exceeding the current rating of the ESCs and the motors. If efficiency and long flight times are important to you, select low KV motors driven by higher voltage batteries. Use a large diameter prop, but be aware that larger props can cause greater vibration and need stronger and more robust frames to support them. Large propellers and low KV motors are best for larger machines that are designed to lift heavy cameras. Control. I now use a combination of KK2, CC3D and Open Pilot Revolution control boards. They are all excellent boards. The overall quality and smooth flight characteristics of the Open Pilot makes them the best for aerial video. But the ease of use and adjustment of the KK2 is really convenient. It also flies well. If you're building your first multirotor, then I highly recommend the KK2 as it's easy to set up and adjust. The KK2 is also, in my view, the best way to learn about PID gains, as settings can easily be changed via the inbuilt LCD screen and then tested immediately. Quad yaw rate. Larger or heavier multirotors with small light propellers don't have enough torque reaction to yaw the craft with authority. The solution, as mentioned in part one, is to angle the front two motors back and the back two motors forward. It's a bit counterintuitive, but makes a huge difference to the yaw rate. Just increasing the yaw response at the controller will produce all sorts of unwanted flying characteristics. Keep the yaw input rate fairly low. It's much better to add some uh, angle to the motors than rely on prop torque reaction alone. In part one, I spoke about using a throttle curve to reduce response around the hover point. This is helpful for lower KV prop speed setups, but on higher prop speed setups, a positive throttle curve may be required to ensure the throttle response is adequate, particularly when flying fast. Vibration. Balance props. Even with machines with vibration damping built into the frame, some vibration will affect video quality unless the props are reasonably well balanced. Use a magnetic balancer and ensure the balancing axle is running true before fine balancing props. Rotate the axle by 90 degrees and check that you still get the same result. If it appears that the balance point has moved, the axle or its supports may be bent or badly aligned. I now balance the blade and the hub. The hubs, even on higher quality props, are often out. I add hot glue to the light side to balance the hubs. I no longer balance the motors by adding tape. Instead, I dynamically balance the motor and the prop. Once the prop is balanced, I fit it to the multi-rotor and spin the motor and prop at around 30% throttle. Enough to get the prop spinning, but not enough to lift. I feel the arm and you can immediately tell if it's vibrating or not. If vibrating, I turn the prop by around 90 degrees relative to the motor and try again. At some point the vibration will be minimised. At the point the light side of the prop and the heavy side of the motor coincide. Camera mount. I found that the most effective strategy is to use a combination of materials to isolate vibration. I assume that the different frequencies are absorbed by the different materials. The combination I use now is large bore silicon tube and layers of velcro. The camera type and setting has a big effect on its sensitivity to vibration. The GoPro 2 on 1080-30 frames per second was pretty useless on a multi-rotor, mainly because the frame and data rate was not fast enough to capture smooth video. For the GoPro 2, 720-60 frames per second produces a very good result. 
The GoPro 3 Black Edition is excellent on 1080 60 frames per second, liquid smooth motion and fairly resistant to vibration effects. The Mobius is an excellent camera for its price, but unfortunately the 720 60 frames per second setting doesn't look very good and has a narrow field of view. The 1080 30 frames per second setting produces really good video, but it's very susceptible to vibration. You'll find it hard to eliminate all vibration effects in the Mobius. Now a few words about uh, recent developments and in particular modular design. I really like modular design as things can be replaced and moved around really easily. On the Y-copter quadcopter the camera and FPV module can be completely removed. It's self-contained and can be fitted to other machines. All of its power connections are contained within one connector including its connection to the GPS for the OSD display. I've also designed a brushless gimbal. This can be plugged into the GoPro mount. This is a self-contained one-piece design. One connection connects its power and the connections to the receiver, pitch and roll control. The GoPro is protected via the gimbal mount with neoprene rubber and a 37mm UV lens filter. I've recently designed a mini quadcopter which I've just started testing. Here's some video footage from the first FPV test. I hope you found this video useful and I'll just wish you good luck with your own designing, building and multi-rotor flying.